Everybody safe? Hurricane Zeta came ashore in Louisiana yesterday and then left a trail across the southeast, including Atlanta. So here are the top three things on my mind this morning. Hurricane Zeta slammed into the Gulf Coast on Wednesday. Zeta weakened to a Category 1 hurricane with winds of 80 miles per hour or 128 kilometers per hour as moved into southern Mississippi a few hours after landfall. Forecasters said it remained a life-threatening storm. Tomorrow, Clorinda and I bring you our Halloween-themed episode of Mass at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Times, Eastern Daylight Time, with guest, with guest, actor, and TikTok superstar Spencer Mumford. You can join our virtual audience by visiting www.facebook.com slash let's go to mass. And... Tomorrow is the last day to early vote here in Georgia before the election on Tuesday. All right, so fixing my hair. Still feeling good as hell. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, speaking of politics. Politics affects every aspect of my life. I mean, it affects every aspect of all of our lives, but some of us are forced to pay attention more than others. If you're one of the ones who cannot wait until the election is over and things return to normal, I don't know what to say to you. I don't, I really. I have a fantasy screenplay in my mind, and it's a fantasy, but it's a bit of a mix between the girl on the train and something else. Look, no one dies, hopefully. It's just an idea for now, but it centers on a trans woman of color, probably black, who fantasizes about what it would be like to be cisgendered, white, and female to have the white picket fence life and to not worry about things like safety, physical safety, job security, family planning, or love and marriage, to sail through life blissfully unaware in sharp contrast to the life she leads. It's a bit, it's a huge lot of escapism. And hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have that script done. Because politics still affect my ability to marry since I'm assigned male at birth and I love men. Seriously, it was just made legal in 2015. June 12th, 1967, also known affectionately as Loving Day, is when it became legal to marry across racial lines. That is not that long ago. As of September 9th, 2019, eight states still require couples to declare their racial background when applying for a marriage license without which they cannot marry. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pause right here and just put this up right here. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get on my soapbox for a minute. Politics and society luckily don't influence my access to decent medical care as I'm in a major city, but it affects the lives of so many, cis and trans, gay and straight. Access to quality medical care in rural areas is a huge issue, never mind if you're queer and trans. Politics and society still dictate how black men and women can style their hair. Known as the Crown Act, this law will prohibit discrimination based on hairstyle and hair texture. Implementation and enforcement of the Crown Act will require employers and schools to examine their facially neutral grooming and appearance policies and the disparate impact on African Americans and other minorities. <laughs> For reference, in 2017, Maya and Deanna Cook, twin sisters in Massachusetts, had to serve detention when school officials determined that their braids violated school policies. In August 2018, Clinton Stanley Jr., a six-year-old student at Books Christian Academy in Florida, was sent home from school on account of his hair. The child's father was told that the school handbook states that boys are not permitted to have dreadlocks. There are jokes to keep from crying about driving while black, existing while black, shopping while black, living while black, buying a house while black. I, and perhaps 20 years later, have fully matured to make this documentary at some point in my life. But while I was in college, I, while studying for my complete degree, I was also supposed to research expat black Americans in France slash Paris. I was dealing with a multitude of other issues in my life at the time. But the question remained, what was the draw of Paris to black Americans, especially post-World War I? 
for just a little frame of reference of what it was like. 1943, across the pond in England, let's have a little history lesson. The Battle of Bamber Bridge. I was born in Bern Bamberg in Germany, but this is Bamber Bridge in England. I shit you not. The Battle of Bamber Bridge was an outbreak of racial violence between black and white American servicemen stationed in the British village of Bamber Bridge, Lincolnshire, in June 1943. The incident, which occurred a few days after the 1943 Detroit race riots, began when white military police, MPs, attempted to arrest several African-American soldiers from racially segregated 1511th Quartermaster Truck Regiment at Ye Old Hob Inn Public House in Bamber Bridge. On the evening of 24th June 1943, some soldiers from 1511th Quartermaster Truck Regiment were drinking in the English, with the English town folk in Ye Old Hob Inn. Two passing MPs, Corporal Roy A. Windsor and Private First Class Ralph F. Ridgway, entered the pub and attempted to arrest one soldier, Private Eugene Nunn, upon seeing he was improperly dressed in a field jacket rather than a classy uniform. An argument ensued between the black soldier and the white MPs with local people and British service women of the Auxiliary Territorial Service siding with Nunn. A British soldier challenged the MP, stating, Why do you want to arrest them? They're not doing anything or bothering anybody. End quote from Wikipedia. Now, granted, that was England, but a similar vein of thought can be found in the writings and comments of expats and visitors, like, visitors, like James Baldwin and Josephine Baker. Also, the fact that they were LGBTQ made the allure of being an expat in France slash Paris even more alluring. Still, I'm not saying why. But what I can say is, even with French and French histories with race and, race and colonies, as an African American who culturally identifies as American, when I travel to Western Europe and when I am in Paris or London for a brief moment, I'm not just black. I'm an American. I have an American accent when I speak my horrible French or attempt a horrible British accent. I don't worry about cops or being assaulted or accused of whatever. But for a brief moment in my life, it feels like the weight of being an African American in America has lifted. And that's why I miss traveling. And look, the burden we carry around is heavy. It's suffocating. The closest I've come to feeling that way stateside is in Manhattan, New York City, on an island that feels somehow it is not a part of America. And yeah, New York has its problems, but I digress. So I too wish that I could just have the elections over and all that political stuff just behind us. Rather, I wish my life wasn't as affected by these issues so I could continue to ignore them. Because it does make one feel hopeless, right? When these issues are continually brought up. Side note, continuously describes an action that happens without ceasing. Continually, on the other hand, describes an action that recurs frequently or regularly. Since no one is correcting me, I'm going to have to correct myself. And you, wanna, you, and you want to do something about this feeling. You're feeling helpless, but you don't know what you can do. So you vote and you dust off your hands like, I've done all I can do. That's it. And yet, that's not it. No, that's not. I think I'm going to keep on ranting here because I am sick of politics. I, too, am sick of politics. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired, but if I'm not getting any rest, then y'all ain't either. I watched Lizzo on David Letterman last night, and baby, I'm feeling good as hell. You know what my guiding principle is? The one thing I remember being instilled in my brother and me, first being raised as a child of the military, and then also seeing my parents continue to give back to their family and communities after making it. The concept of noblesse oblige. The inferred responsibility of privileged people to act with generosity and nobility towards those less privileged. And not just noblesse oblige, but also that being a free citizen comes with inherent responsibilities to my fellow countrymen. Look, we all have varying degrees of privilege, and it is how one uses that privilege that determines the worth of his, her, or their character. Add into that the oft-quoted Maya Angelou quote that when you know better, you do better, there just isn't an excuse. I've had many friends tell me, wow, I'm just learning so much about all of this racial stuff. And I know, putting aside my drop jaw and incredulity, my next implicit question is, so what are you going to do? And that I can tell you is the implicit question of every black, brown, and beige person, queer, trans, etc. are asking. Well, at least every black, brown, and beige, queer person, and trans who are trying to affect change. Look, it's tiring to try and figure out every, with every single encounter with a person, are you friend or foe? Will you accept and acknowledge my humanity? And fret not. I'm not looking for acceptance. But it does determine how we, in this interaction, or whatever interaction, move forward. And your actions will continue to reflect that question and determine if you're a friend or foe. Look. Look at me. 
second. I'm rambling today, and I should save some vim and vigor for future episodes. I should. I just... I just... We're all anticipating November 3rd like it's going to be the end of all our troubles. Either side. And... And... There is still so much work to be done. Look, this is generational work. This doesn't stop at November 3rd. All the politics won't just dis disappear. These problems will not magically vanish. They won't. It takes education to combat ignorance. It takes reading and observing from others' perspectives. And it takes traveling to combat racism and seeing that their people live in different ways. And we should all respect that. But I digress. And I'll stop being the leading man. I'm the lead no. Uh, Ten points of Gryffindor if you know that song. So... You know what? Let's just... Let's get back to earlier this week. So tell me now. Are Joy or Snickles? I didn't hear back from many of you, and it's just... I'm just dying to know. Me personally, I'm going to go with Snickles, but that's only because coconut is a fruit of the devil. As always, keep bearing the lightness of being. Love you all, and until next time, happy Tuesday.